There are hundreds of tools out there for developers, but most of them are just hype. Oh my god, ChatGPT added all these numbers for me. You mean what my calculator just did? So today, I'm going to show you the top five AI tools that I actually use as a developer in my day-to-day -day life. Hi, I'm Pooja, and I've spent eight plus years in the industry as a software engineer, including time at Microsoft. And after trying dozens of coding assistants and AI tools, only a few have truly changed how I build software every day. Stick around, because by the end of this video, you'll know the tools that top engineers are using to stay ahead of the game. Okay, so instead of just listing my top five favorites, I'm going to break this video up into five categories. Because remember, not every AI tool does the same thing. Ugh. All I asked ChatGPT to do was create this code for me, deploy it, monitor it, add logs, and it's not even doing that. You think? <laughs> let's talk about the best code generator or just natural language processor. And what I mean by that is what generates the most accurate code so I don't have to keep going back and fixing syntax errors or it's not hallucinating on me. Of course, every AI will have some sort of hallucination, but this is by far the one with the least amount of hallucinations that I've seen. And it's OpenAI's Codex. So Codex is actually the original model behind GitHub Copilot, and it's built specifically for developers. And it turns natural language into working code. The cool thing about Codex is that it's a multi-platform tool, so you can use it directly in VS Code or in Cursor or even right on the web, which is the example that I'm going to show you today. So I think it's most useful when creating code snippets that you want to use as examples as PR reviews for colleagues or for training new engineers. So you might ask, what's the difference between Codex and ChatGPT? Because I feel like OpenAI has so many products at this point. So compared to something like ChatGPT, Codex is more developer focused. So ChatGPT, of course, is a general AI that can just like summarize things for you. It'll have conversations with you. Hey, ChatGPT, how's it going? Yeah, busy day. Well, it's got to be hard being the smartest person in the room. Am I right? But Codex Web is built to handle real coding tasks, things like generating functions, fixing bugs, or even exploring your code base interactively. So for me, it comes in handy when doing code reviews or just generating a code example that I want to show to my colleagues. I wouldn't want to use a VS extension in that case because it would just be overkill, which is again why I just use the web version. Now, in terms of accuracy and not having hallucinations and code generation, I would also highly recommend using Claude. I use Claude pretty much all the time. I've also made another video where I've mentioned Claude in the past and I think it's a really great tool to use and it's super intuitive. It's generated code snippets and documentation for me and it's phenomenal. So highly recommend both Codex and Claude depending on what you need it for. These are the tools that live inside your IDE. They help you write, refactor, and explain code without ever leaving your editor. So I mentioned Augment in a previous video, but here's why I actually use it. I can clone a massive repo and Augment instantly understands how everything fits together. It takes care of the setup, installing dependencies, adding unit tests, and even building out new features. So what really sets it apart is how deep it goes. Most coding assistants only understand a few lines of code and then try to interpret and generate content for you but that's not enough data. Augment's context engine actually reads the entire repo. It's kind of like a developer that spent a week of studying the code without writing a single line. That's the part that makes a huge difference. Augment indexes the entire repo, meaning it understands all of the files and how everything is put together first. So this tool is also powered by Claude Sonnet 4, which means it can handle huge projects with hundreds of thousands of files and still understand how modules connect and how dependencies flow and where patterns repeat. All right, so let's now talk about the best AI cloud-based development environment and that is Replit. So think of Replit like Google Docs for code. You open it in your browser, you start typing, and you can instantly run and build projects. And there's really not much setup or installation involved. So it comes with its own AI assistant called Ghostwriter. It helps you auto-complete, debug, and even auto-generate code as you're going. And the cool thing about Replit is it isn't just for small scripts. You can actually host full stack applications, which is why I'm getting to the cloud-based part of it. Now, it isn't as big as something like AWS, CP or Azure. It is big enough to run your backend with Node.js or Python Flask. You can connect it to your front end and it all works inside your browser. It even includes a simple built-in database, like a little notepad for your app's data. And inside you can literally write something like add Pooja as a username in the DB and it stays there in between runs. So if you need something more advanced, you can just hook it up to an external database like Firebase, Supabase, MongoDB, or even Postgres, just like you would on a real server. So you get a public URL that you can share right away. And so it makes it 
really easy for quick testing or even demos. I would definitely use Replit as something to create an MVP. Again, it's not going to host entire applications for the enterprise environment, but it can definitely host MVPs. So basically, Replit is like having a mini cloud setup on your browser. I want to introduce today's sponsor, Radiant. So last week, I was in one of those quick sync meetings with a fellow engineer. You know, the kind where like a five minute chat turns into 15 different tasks that I have to do. And normally after a call like that, I have to write a follow up email, updates on the documentation for the new feature, and then summarize all of our findings to my manager. But this time I used Radiant. So Radiant is an AI meeting assistant and workspace that listens to your meetings locally. No bots awkwardly joining the call. And when the meeting ends, it instantly drafts everything for you. Emails, linear style ticket updates, specs, briefs, task lists, pretty much all of it. In our meeting, Radiant turned a conversation about a bug. So basically, there's a couple of bugs into a clean reproducible ticket. It turned a vague, like we should refactor this by updating the documentation outline and even wrote the follow-up email that I'm supposed to send to my manager afterwards. It also plugs into tools dev teams actually use like Slack, Linear, Lovable, and Cursor. So you're not constantly context switching. So if you wanna turn your meetings into actual completed work without you actually doing all the work, try Radiant. It's free now while it's an open beta. It's an AI meeting assistant and workspace built for engineering work. The link is in the description below. Now back to the video. Next up, the best agent builder. Now this one's a bit subjective because an agent can mean different things depending on what you're trying to build. I've used N8N quite a bit and I've actually made a full length video on this before, which you can check out after this one. But here's the short version. So for anyone new to the concept, an agent is just an LLM on steroids. Instead of just answering questions, it could actually get things done for you. Like not just summarizing emails, but reading them, organizing them, and even sending replies. And that's exactly what I used N8N for, basically automating my email workflow. And the coolest part was that I didn't have to write a single line of code. It's all just visual. So you drag and connect blocks, kind of like putting together a puzzle. Each block represents a step. You get emails, you summarize them, you send a response, whatever you want. So for example, let's say that I want to create a simple chatbot agent that can email people. So for example, I'll say, send this email to Manos, that's my husband, and then I'll give an actual message that I want to send to him. And then with N8N, I can literally build that in under 10 minutes, start to finish. It makes AI feel very practical and easy to use. Okay, so that example shows that you're not just building chatbots, you're building entire workflows because this doesn't have to be isolated to just an email automation system. There are tons of other features that N8N gives you access to. As long as you have something like a Google Calendar, a Gmail account, or just whatever account you have that you want to integrate AI into or use agentic workflows with, you can do that here. All right, last but not least, let's talk about AI model libraries. Because here's the thing, at some point, you're going to want to integrate AI directly into your code base. Maybe your API needs to summarize documents, generate text, or help users find information faster. And just like you wouldn't build a hash map from scratch in Java, you're not going to build your own LLM model either unless you really want to. But that's where Hugging Face comes in. It's basically the GitHub of AI models. It's a huge open library where you can browse, test, and integrate models right into your app. They've got everything from tiny local models to massive open weight LLMs. Some models do require API keys or paid credits, but a lot of them are free, so you can get started very easily. And if you want to upgrade, then you can do so. And if you want a practical example, I actually made a video where I used Hugging Face with Langchain and Google Colab to build a resume ATS system. It literally runs your resume through an AI model and gives you feedback on what to improve, which honestly is super helpful for job applications. Tools like Hugging Face move on from just using AI tools to building with AI tools. And that's where the future of software engineering is headed. So yeah, those are my top AI tools that I would use as a software engineer. They're practical, powerful, and they've genuinely changed the way that I work. But remember, at the end of the day, the best tool for you is the one that fits your workflow. Whether you need an agentic system, system, an IDE powered LLM, or a cloud dev environment, you need to start small and experiment and build from there. Because that's what a modern developer does. We don't just write code anymore. We build with intelligent systems. So happy learning. And let me know in the comments if you found a tool that really benefits your workflow, because I definitely want to check it out if so. All right, thanks and see you guys later.